the fabled city of spires and minarets, lying at the crossroads of east and west. Istanbul, the surging, soaring heart of Turkey, and the new chic place to be. But one man with talk of the past is spoiling the party. Modern Turkey's greatest writer, Orhan Pamuk. What happened to Turkey's Ottomans is a grave, important issue that uh, both the nation should know about and we have to have a freedom of speech. What happened to Orhan Pamuk is a salutary tale of state repression, not only of freedom of speech today, but of the truth of the country's past. The author's sin was to publicly call into question the deeds of the nation's founding fathers. And the way the state has handled his case reveals the deep forces that are pulling at Turkish society. And it shows exactly why Turkey faces so many hurdles when it comes to joining the European Union. Orhan Pamuk dared to speak of a dark episode in Turkey's past, the forced removal and killing of over a million Armenians. This was a taboo at, which lies at the heart of modern Turkish Republic. <laughs> For breaking that taboo, he ran headlong into the turbocharged power of Turkish nationalism. Artık e, Türk milletine küfür ve hakaret ederek, e, yererek, kendi tarihiyle alay ederek e, bir yere varılamayacağını Türk edebiyatçıların, Türk tarihçilerin veya Türk bilim adamlarının bilmesi gerekir. Pamuk was charged with insulting the Turkish state. His court appearance capping an extraordinary year-long saga. The popular press dubbed him an abject creature. His books were burnt, his photograph shredded, and there were threats on his life. If every city has its author, then for Istanbul it is Orhan Pamuk. The beauty and the intrigue, the rumours and the secrets. No one knows the streets better. When I talk about Istanbul, it's like talking about your family. This is the town that was given to me. And I have learned to love it, to embrace it, as one loves and embraces one's family. Orhan Pamuk is a son of Istanbul's establishment, who, as a young man, was exposed to the ways of the West. He's the insider who sees his town through the eyes of the stranger. Especially if you're a novelist, it's your job to elaborate the difference of your thinking. It's your job to think differently, uh, to contradict what the public opinion or the strong, strongest opinion tells you to think about the town, the life, the quality of life. Contradicting public opinion has proved a dangerous pursuit for Orhan Pamuk. It's turned him from best-selling popular author to social outcast. Fatefully for him, he raised the plight of those who live on the margins of Turkish life, 
the nation's Armenian population. Once a thriving community lived here, now in this Istanbul suburb, only a handful remain. A shared memory of pain lights a dark past, what the Armenians call the first genocide of the 20th century. Like a torch, it's passed from generation to generation. A bond all the stronger because the Turks deny that it ever happened. Around the corner from the Armenian church lives Sarkis Cherkessian. At 90 years of age, he still bears witness to the horrors visited upon his people. His home is a monument to the Armenian suffering, capturing the time when rulers of the old Ottoman Empire expelled Armenians from their land and out of their homes and forced them to march into the desert of neighbouring Syria. Men, women and children, their fate was a near certain death. İnsanlar çocuklarını taşıyamaz oldu ve o çocukları Arap köylerinin yanından geçerken oraya bırakıp gittiler Araplara. Sarkis Çekeşian's father and mother were on that desert march. By a miracle they survived, but with a tragic legacy. Benden evvel bir çocuğu oluyor, sabaha karşı annem doğum yapıyor. Sabah jandarma gelmiş, çadırları sökün demiş. Babam çıkmış dışarı demiş ki, asker efendi demiş, sabaha karşı bir çocuğumuz gel, dünya geldi, annesi daha yenidir. Bir iki saat sonra çıkalım, dinlensin. Babama elindeki kırbaçla vurmuş demiş ki, biz sizin kökünüzü kazmak istiyoruz, siz daha çocuk mu yapıyorsunuz demiş. Ve o, o benim büyüğüm olacaktı, ölmüş yani. What happened to Sarkis Cherkessian's people is recognized as genocide by governments around the world and by most historians. In modern Turkey, though, there's been 90 years of near silence. Until last year, when Orhan Pamuk spoke about it to a Swiss newspaper. What I said is true. Uh, legally, I have the right to say it, and historically, and more also morally, this has to be said if we are decent human beings. But then there is the burden of history, the fact that the nation does not know it. I am annoyed by the social side of this. My case grew and grew and grew, and unfortunately fell in between Turkey and Europe. <laughs> Beneath the gaze of the founder of the Turkish Republic, Kemal Atatürk, the razor-sharp lawyer Kemal Kerinçinç is the man who's turned the power of Turkish nationalism on the author. Şimdi... Orhan Pamuk'un burada yapmış olduğu doğrudan doğruya öncelikle Türk milletine Türklüğe hakarettir. 
tamamen ilgi çekmek amacıyla yazmış olduğu romanlarına gerek Türkiye'deki entelektüellerin gerekse Avrupa ve dış dünyada gerekli olan ilgi ve alakayı çekebilmek amacıyla ve hatta onun ötesinde kendisine koymuş olduğu Nobel e, ödülüne aday olmak amacıyla böyle bir e, tarihi çarpıtma olayına gitmektedir. Bu Mustafa Kemal bizim topraklarımızdan yetişti. The populist lawyer doesn't want Turkey to be part of the European Union. Whatever the country's leaders say about the economic pluses. His anti-outsider message plays well in the court of public opinion. And he saves his special venom for those who carry the lamp of the West. People like Orhan Pamuk. Eğer siz atalarınızı katil olduğunu iddia edebiliyorsanız, bunu açıkça, 30 bin Kürd'ün katledildiğini, yine 1,5 milyon Ermeni'nin kesildiğini, yine atalarınız tarafından yapıldığını ki hiçbir tarihi bilgiye dayanmaksın ileri sürebiliyorsanız, yani açıkça sizin dedeleriniz, babalarınız birer katildi, soykırım yaptı diyorsanız, bu açıkça Türk milletinin e, küçük düşürme anlamını taşımaktadır. Kemal Kerinçic speaks for nearly all Turks when he argues there was no genocide of the Armenians in 1915. The official Turkish version is that the Armenians had sided with the Russians at the onset of World War I and were therefore the enemy. They say the Armenians have exaggerated the death toll and that in any case just as many Turks were killed by Armenians. And departing from that script made Orhan Pamuk a national villain. The reaction uh, was exaggerated, filled with lots of personal envy and resentment. And the fact that I made this remark to a uh, uh, Swiss newspaper was also xenophobically exaggerated. And it was an, a hate campaign, a sort of a, what others call lynching campaign. Unfortunately, uh, I was forced to leave the country for a while, but I returned. Pamuk's words were taken by many as an attack on Kemal Ataturk, the father of the modern Turkish state. To attack him is to attack the country's greatest military figure, heresy in a country where the victor at Gallipoli is still venerated and where the military holds enormous sway. One Istanbul district prosecutor with sympathy for the nationalists' argument charged the writer under Article 301 of Turkey's Penal Code, a law which makes it an offence to insult the Turkish state. It carries a six-month jail sentence and it was a direct hit on the writer's freedom of speech. I think that this is a law uh, that they keep in a drawer, not display to European Union or international community because they will think that that's bad. You've called Article 301 a secret gun. It is a secret gun, not in the sense that it's not being displayed, displayed to civilized world, but it's in the drawer and when they want to hit shoot someone in the head because they're angry, they just pull it out and sh shoot a person. Indeed, Orhan Pamuk is only the best known of those charged under Article 301. The state has charged dozens of others. Hrant Dink runs the Armenian newspaper in Istanbul. Grand total, 6,000 copies. A small print run it may be, but for advocating the Armenian cause, Hrant Dink is facing three separate actions under Article 301. It's a sign, he says, of how fragile Turkey is about its past. Asıl tehlikelisi de onlar için, yani yöneten erkler için içerideki uyanlıktır. 
Onun için bizim içeriden konuşmalarımız onları çok daha rahatsız ediyor. Ve e, doğrusu sonuna kadar da bu mücadeleyi e, götüreceklerdir. Çünkü e, Türk insanı hakikaten e, tarihte ne oldu sorusunu artık sormaya başladı. Ataturk's self-styled defenders have little time for self-reflection when it comes to the Armenian question. For them, Turkey is for the Turks, and there's no having outsiders crash the party, especially the Europeans, with their demands that Turkey acknowledge the Armenian genocide. That, says Kemal Karincic, will only embolden the Armenians to demand the return of land and more. Milyarlarca dolarla Türk devletinin karşı karşıya gelmesi de yine aynı şekilde söz konusu olabilecektir. Kaldı ki yine bir kısım özellikle Avrupalı siyasetçiler işte senede 4-5 milyar dolar bir bedelin Ermenilere tazminat ödenmesinde ne sakınca çıkar? Bu bir kardeşliğin temeli olmalıdır gibisinden beyanların da hemen bu olayların akabinde görünce bizim savunmalarımızın da ne kadar haklı olduğu ortaya çıkıyor. The case against Orhan Pamuk reached a farcical end. Under pressure from Europe, the prosecution of the author under Article 301 was dropped. But that's far from the end of it. Kemal Karincic wants the author punished, and he's appealing the decision. For his part, Orhan Pamuk is acutely aware that his case has now become a symbol for all those who are for and against Turkey joining the European Union. Let's not forget that Turkey is not joining European Union today. Even the most optimistic people tell us that this will happen in 10 years or say 15 years. We, are, we have just managed to start negotiations with the European Union and, it, and, and during this process, of course, lots of things hopefully will change. Likes of me, perhaps in two or three years, we are hoping, will not uh, go to court for saying political things or saying non-violent things. The words of this celebrated Turkish author have forced the Turkish state to confront some tough truths about its past and its present. How it deals with these truths will decide its European fate.